that kicks us off nicely. Mm -hmm. Let me turn to Justine. Uh, you're a, a woman, you're a CEO of a very successful company, uh, you're, you're a mother, you've got all these millions of women who are, uh, and certainly over the last week, we've had a, a thread, some of you might know, and if you don't, you might want to look at a, a thread at the top of the Mumsnet website, and women have been engaging uh, in a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. I think what struck me the most at first is that actually a lot of women didn't know anything that the EU had really done for them. So what are, the, what are their concerns? Um, how would you explain some of the concerns you've seen over the last week that have come up uh, mm. on Mumsnet? Mm. I think that's, it's fair to say that people haven't really been aware of, the work, of how important the EU has been in some of the legislation that has moved on women's rights in this country. Um, and actually what would, interested me was someone who said, I didn't need, why are the EU asking this question? I didn't even know gender equality was one of their aims. And that's quite interesting. So um, from a purely marketing point of view, I'm not sure a great job has been done um, to tell people that this, you know, how, how good some of the work that's been done has been and how important it's been. Um, there was a, quite a lot of grumbling about car insurance. Um, which, of course, then, it being mum's net, someone very intelligent came along and said, yes, but there, you know, without that, you wouldn't have got equal pension rights um, if we hadn't changed the car insurance laws. So, they, you know, I think, broadly speaking, people, once they engaged and saw the arguments, realised that most of the stuff that was important to them around maternity rights, shared maternity leave, part-time workers' rights, had come out of what the EU had done. Um, but... We can't escape the fact, even today, there was a story in the news today about how even female graduates at the graduate level with the same degrees are earning less than their male counterparts. So there's clearly a lot more still to be done. So actually, um, you use the word, I think that's quite interesting uh, with you, a lack of marketing from the, I'll use another word, branding. Um, actually, is there a strong argument to say that this has been a very good uh, branding and marketing exercise for the UK Office of the EU Parliament? So, this because actually it's, it's heightened, it's raised the awareness. Yeah. Of, I, th uh, I think that's right. Yeah. And I think also, you know, it's very important given that we may well be, you know, having a referendum soon. It'd be very easy for people not to join the dots up and think, well, of course, I'm, you know, I'm delighted that I, uh, I now have some rights to go to antenatal clinic and, and uh, take time off for that. And I'm delighted that as a part time worker, I have some rights, but I, they don't know that it's the EU directives that have led to that situation. So, so maybe because um, maybe that's something to be explored. For example, that's a, a symbiotic relationship that could that has begun thanks to this debate, thanks to this 40-year anniversary. So that's already a plus. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's something, it's not for me to be telling uh, uh, this very capable office what it needs to do, but that certainly would be a great place. It's already started. Um, and then maybe to think, maybe you could help them identify other mm. places where they can reach um, other sections of the population. Let me ask you another quick question. Why do you think there has been, apart from we've now had a little go at uh, maybe the EU, but do you think that the media bears a certain responsibility in this country for not actually helping to carry that message, that often it's a very negative message and we hear about what's not working in the EU? I think that's right. I mean, bear in mind, your, the, the Mumstead audience is clearly... Uh, I think an audience that's sympathetic to improvement of gender equality in a way that not all all of the entire UK audience and certainly the business audience might be a bit different. Um, you know, so I think you, it, there is a message to promote the good you've done to the people who would be pleased about it, so they know when it comes to future decisions about whether they're supportive of this institution, that they know that there's actually been some good work in this area. But, I mean, I take your point about the media, but I'm also a small business owner as well as a mum and as well as someone who's very concerned about maternity rights and the rest of it. So there is a flip side to this pursuit of uh, rights for women in the workplace, which is, you know, some employers, your Alan Sugars, would be thinking, well, this is a pain. It's more legislation. It makes it, you know, it more expensive for me to, I've, you know, hire women and they go off on maternity leave. I never see them again. Uh, so I'm just putting 
yeah, the absolutely. counter argument. Mum's Thank net, you, no, we, have, you we have 60 <laughs> women employed by Mum's net of a childbearing age. We have very few men. So I'm right at the centre of that. Mm. You know. um, but um, we'll come on to that, I'm yeah. sure, about how, how business actually deals with that. Yes, please. Um, uh, very briefly, uh, one extra thing, and that is that, of course, like around the world to do with finances, when you give a woman... Uh, or the woman inherits de facto uh, the budget of handling the household, whether she's a single mother or um, just a, a single woman. Um, the women that the EU is interfacing with at the moment through Mumsnet, of course, those women are busy bringing up women and uh, daughters and sons, and that's so that they're reaching them. But those women will, in turn, as they gain information, be able to share that in their households um, and also with the partners, the male or other female partners that they that they have. Mm -hmm.